Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle. If you guys are new, hi, welcome. Um, today's video is more of an instructional video and it's going to be how you make sure your foundation is not cakey, plus how your concealer, um, how you can prevent your concealer from creasing. Um, I decided to make this video because I have been using different techniques in my uh, makeup application and I decided to share them with you because they have made a difference in how my foundation looks, wears, and also how my concealer looks and wears. So if you guys want to see my tips and tricks on how to make sure your foundation does not cake up and you don't look like a cake face and how to make sure your concealer does not crease, then let's get straight into the video. Bye guys! Okay, before we start putting on any foundation or anything onto our skin, we want to make sure that your skin is prepped properly. So what I do is before I usually apply my foundation, depending on what time of the day it is, I usually wash my face in the morning and at night, um, and most of the times I will apply my makeup in the morning. Um, so my skin's already prepped, but what you want to do is before you do your foundation and makeup, you want to cleanse, um, moisturize, and exfoliate your skin before you do your makeup. About 10 minutes before, let everything sit in on your skin for about 10 minutes and then go in with your foundation. You want to make sure that your skin is prepped properly. So your skincare, moisturization, all those products are super important before you put on foundation because that is the base layer. If your base layer isn't ready and set, then it's not going to be ready for the foundation and it's not going to sit right on your skin. So when it comes to skincare, I usually just use any regular old um, cleanser that works for you. Um, every skin is different. The one that I've been using currently is the Tarte Cosmetics Rainforest of the Sea Cleanser. I love that cleanser and it's just filled with a lot of natural and good pro um, ingredients. And then for serums and all that, I really switch and I go on and off because I have so many that I get sent to me through like all the subscription boxes that I have and just stuff like that. So I tend to just use a ton of different serums. I love serums. Um, but go ahead and use whichever one you have, or if you don't use them, that's fine, then go right in with your moisturizer. My favorite moisturizer that I've been using has been, this is a little sample of it, but um, I have a bigger tub in my bathroom, but I just, for the purpose of this video, I brought this. It is the Tarte Cosmetics Drink of H2O Hydrating Boost. This stuff is amazing. It is super hydrating, and I love when my skin feels really, really hydrated. I'd rather have a hydrating moisturizer rather than a matte moisturizer, just because, I don't know, it makes my skin... Um, feel and look better and it gets it ready for the foundation. That's just my personal opinion. I have normal to combination skin. It depends on the season. Summer I usually tend to be more oily and in the winter I tend to be more dry. Um, so I just always love to be hydrated 24-7 year round. I just use a hydrating moisturizer. After my moisturizer, I go with my eye creams. I always prep my eyes. This is one step that's super important for when your concealer is increasing. Um, one of the reasons why your concealer might be creasing is because your under eyes are dry. Um, I don't remember what video it was in. I don't remember who I was watching, but one of the YouTube that I was watching said that um, your under eyes are the only place that doesn't produce oil. And I thought that was really interesting. And our under eyes are meant to be dry, so you have to put products on them to make sure they're moisturized. So my favorite moisturizer um, or eye treatment for underneath my eye, I go back and forth, but these two are the ones that I use and I love. The first one is the Ole Henrich... Ole Hendrickson Ultimate Lift Eye Gel, um, and this is just a really moisturizing, it's super, super hydrating, it's literally a gel, I love it so much, and it does prep my under eyes for the concealer. And then my second favorite one that I usually use at night um, is the Tarte Cosmetics Maracuja Sea Brightener Eye Treatment, this is just a little one that I got in a traveling pack. But they are both amazing for your under eye, and you want to make sure that you do that step because you want to make sure your eyes are prepped for the concealer so there's no creasing. So when it comes to exfoliation, I don't usually do it all the time because that will make your skin even drier, but I do do it occasionally, maybe once, maybe twice a week. Um, it depends on how my skin is feeling and if I have a lot of texture, but mostly once a week. This is the um, exfoliator that I have been using and I've been loving, um, and I got this in a FabFitFun box and I'm so happy I got it. Um, it is the Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion Age Defying Exfoliator. Um, it comes out as like a white cream and it just, there's really, really fine particles in it and it just feels super fine and it just lightly exfoliates your face. You don't want anything too crazy or too heavy because that will irritate your skin and it will just make your skin go all out of whack. So you want something that is super, super gentle but will do the thing that you want it to. So this is a great exfoliator for your skin and I just feel like it gets rid of all the texture and dry skin on my face which will prep you, uh, your skin for your foundation. If your skin is dry, the foundation is going to cling to the dry patches so bad. Some days I have it, usually like in this area, this is where I'm mostly dry. Um, but you want to make sure that your skin is properly exfoliated so the foundation can lay on your skin properly. 
Another thing that I like to do right before foundation, I promise, this is the last step. Skincare is so important, um, but this is the last step, and I like to go in with an oil. Um, I feel like it just makes your skin super hydrated, and it just lets the foundation glide on super easy. Um, so I like to go in with the Tarte Cosmetics Maracuja Oil. This stuff is amazing for your skin, but it also just sets your skin for the foundation and makes sure your skin is super hydrated. So what I like to do is I take a couple drops in my hand, probably two. So I just like to push products into my skin, anything, moisturizer, any of that. So I'm just going to push the oil into my skin and make sure everything is ready for foundation. So before your foundation, I love to always apply a primer. I always love putting a base before my foundation because if I just go in with foundation, it will settle into my fine lines, it'll settle into my pores, and it just won't look as nice um, if I don't use a primer. So I'm going to name a couple of my favorite primers. Um, you guys know this is one of my favorite ones. I do have prominent pores in this area. Most people do. It is human nature. Um, but I also like to use it because I do have prominent lines, um, especially my smile lines. Um, I, I feel like they crease the most when I have foundation on. Um, but mostly up here, I mean, most people have that. So I love to use the um, Professional by Benefit Cosmetics. This is amazing and it just fills in all those fine lines and pores on your skin and basically just has a clean slate for the foundation that you're going to apply. I also just recently figured out that I like to put it underneath my under eyes a little bit and then right on the cheekbones just because I do have some texture there because of my rosacea. So I just feel like that kind of just like evens out all the texture on my skin and I feel like my foundation goes on a lot more flawlessly when I've done that lately. Um, and also when I apply it underneath my eyes, I notice less creasing um, because that's what it's for. It's supposed to fill in the fine lines and I didn't even think about that and I just did it one day and I was like, wow, why haven't I done that? So I like to just put a little bit of product underneath my eyes so it fills in the fine lines so there's less creasing when it comes to your concealer. I also like to go in with spray before my foundation. I feel like that just really hydrates my skin and gets it ready for the foundation. I'm all about hydration when it comes to my skin because um, I feel like the foundation lays um, even better on your skin when your skin is like super super hydrated. So I have been using, there's a couple sprays that I like. Um, the MAC Cosmetics Fix Plus is an amazing spray. It literally is a holy grail staple. I feel like in the makeup industry it is an amazing product and it's not raved about for no reason. It's such an amazing product. So I like to go in with that before and after my foundation. Um, I also like to go in with the Milani Cosmetics Make It Last Setting Spray. You guys can tell it's literally empty. This is one of my favorite, favorite setting sprays and prepping sprays. It literally says prime, correct, and set, and it's 16 hour wear. It's an amazing product, and it's drugstore. So I highly recommend this spray. Um, so yeah, going with any, you literally can go with any setting spray as well, just to hydrate and prep your skin. When you spray on the spray, you wanna make sure it dries before you put on your foundation. So I just push that into my skin so I make sure that it is sinking into my skin and then just let it fully dry before you apply your foundation. So as I'm letting this dry, I'm going to talk about the importance of makeup brushes. So when it comes to foundation and applying my foundation, I am a diehard addict for the beauty blender. It is not raved about for no reason. This is such an amazing makeup product and it has changed the way that I do my foundation over the years. So beauty blender basically just Make sure that the foundation applies flawlessly. It soaks up any excess product that you don't need. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. When it comes to makeup brushes and applying my foundation, I don't really like to use makeup brushes. To me, um, sorry, I'm pretty sick and I'm getting over a cold. Um, to me, I feel like it comes out pretty streaky on my skin. I always see those little brush hair lines on my skin when I'm applying foundation. So I have just been a ride or die for the Beauty Blender. Um, so yeah, that's what I like to use, and make sure the Beauty Blender is damp. You do not want to apply your foundation when the Beauty Blender is dry. Oh my gosh, I can't express that enough. You don't want the Beauty Blender to be like seepingly wet, but you want it to be damp. So what I like to do is, I like to run it underneath the water, I'll let it sit there, and I'll just squeeze it about five to ten times. I'll just sit there so it soaks up the water, and then as I'm done, I'll just wring it out. Um, all the way and then that is the perfect amount of water for your beauty blender. You want it to be wet But you don't want it to be dripping wet and also when it comes to clean brushes and clean beauty blenders in general You want to make sure that your brushes are always clean when you're doing your mount your foundation and your makeup in general like your eye makeup Clean brushes make sure that you have a clean slate to apply your foundation and your makeup If your brushes are dirty and your and your beauty blender is dirty It's going to apply them patchy and it's not going to be as seamless as it is if they were clean So you always want to make sure that you clean your brushes after and or before you do your foundation and your makeup. 
I like to use for my Beauty Blender. I love the Solid Beauty Blender Cleanser from Sephora. Oh my god, that thing is a freaking lifesaver. I used to use baby shampoo, but um, that works for makeup brushes. That's what I usually use for makeup brushes. But the, for the Beauty Blender, I find it a little more difficult to get the product out. Um, but since I got a free sample of the Solid um, Cleanser when I bought like a Sephora package one time, I've fallen in love with that product. It is amazing, and I can literally clean my Beauty Blender in like a minute or two. It just sucks out all the product from the Beauty Blender. Other like than other products, I usually will have to sit there and scrub my Beauty Blender for a couple minutes if I'm using another one. But the Solid Cleanser from Beauty Blender is just amazing, and it's what it's made for. It's made for the Beauty Blender, so I highly recommend Baby Shampoo for makeup brushes and the Solid Cleanser for the Beauty Blender. Finally, it's time to apply foundation and concealer. This is the part that we've been waiting for. Um, so my favorite foundation that I've been using lately is the L'Oreal Paris. Infallible Pro Go in the shade 205, which is natural beige, just matches my fake tan um, that I'm currently fake tanning. Um, but the one reason why I really love this foundation um, because it's super hydrating. It's called Pro Glow. Um, I really like to use hydrating foundations because I feel like that lays on my skin better. Like I said, I'm all about hydrating skin, hydrating foundations, and just your skin overall being properly moisturized. Um, I feel like sometimes when I go in with a matte or a thicker foundation. Um, it tends to like sink into my fine lines or it accentuates texture on my skin or it's just super drying for my skin and I feel it on my face. This has really worked for me and it has made my skin look flawless and I feel hydrated throughout the day and it doesn't bother me and it has a really good wear as well. So this is what I have been loving lately and it's from the drugstore so it's super affordable and you don't have to break your bank going out and getting this foundation so I highly recommend it. Um, so overall I love hydrating primer, hydrating primers, I love hydrating foundations especially for this time of year and in general, um, I just feel like it lays on my skin better. So what I do is I don't put the product on the back of the beauty blender and then apply it. I apply it with my finger first. And then I'll go in the beauty blender and blend it. I feel like if I applied it first to the beauty blender, it'll just soak up the product and I will lose half the product that I'm using. So applying it to my skin first makes it so I don't lose as much product. So when it comes to applying my foundation in the Beauty Blender, I don't press so hard and I don't bounce it so hard because that will soak up the product. I like to keep the coverage. So I lightly tap it onto my face and blend outwards. I work in sections, so I'll do my cheeks first because that's where I need the most coverage. Clearly, it's where my most redness is. And then I will finish with my forehead and then I'll just reapply wherever, anywhere else I need extra coverage. The Beauty Blender just applies the foundation so nicely and I feel like also when it comes to the Beauty Blender, um, I feel like it just gives me that extra hydration that I really like because it's already wet and the, and the, foundi the foundation and the Beauty Blender is already wet so it's just adding more moisture onto my skin. So when it comes to this foundation, it's not too heavy so it's not going to crease under my eyes so I will bring it up towards the under eye but if you're using a heavier foundation like the Tarte Amazonian or like the Kat Von D, um, they are so thick that if you put, on, put it underneath your eyes, it is going to crease. So I usually, if I'm doing a more heavier foundation, I will kind of leave this spot open just because I'm already going to apply concealer. You don't need to put any extra coverage on there because you're going to conceal anyway. Now when it comes to concealer, um, it depends on what concealer you would like to use. Um, if you properly moisturize your under eyes, it shouldn't feel drying. So I really like the Tarte Shea Tape Concealer. A lot of people complain, sometimes people complain that it is too drying, but I feel like they haven't properly moisturized their under eyes correctly. And also another people, another mistake that people make, um, and this is why your concealer creases, you use too much. With the Shape Tape, or just in general, you only need a certain amount. You need to know the consistency of your concealer and then um, figure out how much product you need. Like I will apply, let me find it. I will apply way more of the Maybelline Fit Me because it is a lighter concealer versus the Tarte Shape Tape. You do not need as much product with this product versus this product. So you need to know your consistency of your concealers and know whether it's a full coverage versus a lighter coverage. So for today, I'm going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light Medium. So what I like to do is I like to just do four little lines underneath each eye. This is enough. And then I'll just do a couple dots on the chin, Cupid's bow, down the nose, and then a little bit on the forehead. Another thing that I love about the another thing that I love about the Beauty Blender is that I feel like 
One of the reasons why my concealer doesn't crease and it is looks super flawless is because of the Beauty Blender. Um, it just blends out your concealer so well and it just soaks up all the extra concealer that you don't need, which is super important because if you have too much concealer underneath your eye, it is going to look cakey and it is going to crease. So I feel like the Beauty Blender is such a great tool when it comes to applying your concealer as well. Um, just to further um, share my love for this product. But um, I'm going to go in with this and I'm going to blend out my concealer. So I usually let these two sit the longest um, and I'll start blending out with my chin. So light tapping just to keep the um, full coverage of the concealer. The harder you push, the more product the beauty blender is going to soak up. So I just like to blend it out underneath my eyes, on the side of my nose to cancel out all the darkness, and then on my eyelids. Now, on the lines of setting your concealer, I feel like one of the main things that really helps with concealer not creasing is if you bake. I know this is such a like push topic and everyone's baking and everyone's contouring and everyone's doing all that, but baking seriously does help when it comes to creasing and your concealer. Um, so I always bake when it comes to doing my, my, my makeup. If I'm doing like a really heavy makeup look um, and I'm wearing the full face, I will bake my concealer because that is the only thing that keeps my concealer from not creasing, especially around my smile lines and my forehead. Um, so since I've gone back to the Laura Mercier Transition Powder, I've realized that I love this product and it's so freaking good. When it comes to the Cody Air Sponge, oh my god, my skin is itching me! When it comes to the Cody Air Sponge Translucent Powder, I feel like my under eyes still creased. Um, but I never noticed how much it creased until I went back to the Laura Mercier and I noticed how flawless my makeup looked using that. So today I'm gonna go in with, whoop. so today I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and I use this only to bake my under, not my under eyes, basically anywhere that I applied in my concealer. So my under eyes, my chin, um, I will do my smile lines and my forehead. Everywhere else I will set with a, another powder. So I'm going to go in with, I usually use my Beauty Blender or I use my Morphe M438 brush because this is a perfect little brush to get underneath my eyes. So I'm going to use this one today. Um, so what I do is I pack the brush with product. Well first, you want to make sure that you blend out underneath your eye with the Beauty Blender one last time to make sure that there is no creasing because you don't want to set the creases. You want to make sure they are blended out before you set them. And then go in with that brush and just place the product underneath your eye. I like to go underneath the eye first, so that's where the most creasing is. And then I will bring the product down and just set the rest of the concealer. Then I'll move on to my chin. And then my smile lines, I'll go right down. And then I will finish with my forehead and in between my eyebrows. Now, some days are better than others. Um, some days my skin will be more dry than others, so it depends on how long I will let the translucent powder sit here. I don't let it sit for very long because my skin just is drying in general, um, and this will dry out my skin. So I let it sit for about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, and then I'll wipe it off. So while I'm letting this set, um, I will usually go in with my face powder and set the rest of my foundation. The most amazing face powder that I have used and found is the Maybelline Super Stay Better Skin Skin Transforming Powder in the shade Classic Ivory. You can see I've hit pan and I'm obsessed with this product. It is amazing. So what I'll do is I'll go with any powder brush. I usually go in with another Morphe brush, um, but that's packed away in my suitcase because I am going to visit my boyfriend in upstate New York this weekend. Um, so I'm going to just going to use the Morphe G0. It's a huge powder brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub my brush into the product so it picks up all that face products. And I'm going to press it into my foundation. I actually like this brush better. It's huge. So the good thing about, um, the one thing, not the good thing, the one thing you want to remember is not to wipe the powder on your face. You want to press it into your foundation. Because if you... If you um, wipe on your foundation, oh my god, Noel, you can't speak, it will literally take the foundation off your skin and it won't look as flawless. You want to press the powder into your skin so it's setting. And then as you're doing that, you can just wipe away the excess powder because I can feel my under eyes drying up. 
So now that my foundation and concealer is set and we're all ready to go, I'm going to do the rest of my foundation and makeup and I will be right back with the finishing step to making sure your foundation stays on day long and it's not cakey and your concealer does not crease. I will be right back. So the last step into the process of making sure your foundation doesn't look cakey um, and that your concealer does not crease is you need to set your foundation with a setting spray. Um, I can't stress this enough and I, and I hate, like I always hate when I forget to set my foundation because... A, your foundation doesn't last as long when you don't set it, um, and B, it just feels different before and after you set your foundation. Um, when you set your foundation with a setting spray, it kind of just like makes sure your foundation doesn't look cakey, it takes away the powdery effect of it, and all just like, kind of just makes your face look flawless. I don't know how to describe it, but once you set your foundation, it just like, it's like this, the cherry on top of the cake, basically. So... I have a ton of different setting, setting sprays that I love to use, and I'm going to name a few for you. Um, you guys know, again, the Milani Make It Last. It's good for priming and also setting. This is amazing, and it has proven that like my foundation does last longer when I use this. No joke, I see a completely different um, difference when I use this and when I don't. Um, another drugstore option that I really like, it's empty as you can hear, is the Maybelline Make It Maybelline Master Fix Wear Boosting Setting Spray. Again, another great drugstore setting spray. Um, another one, I love the whole line of the Urban Decay setting sprays, the hydrating one, the matte one, and the um, all-nighter one. They're all amazing, um, especially the all-nighter. That thing is like glue. Um, and then lastly, my favorite setting spray um, is the MAC Fix Plus. This stuff is amazing, and it just makes your foundation and your pattern, everything just look beautiful and just like it makes sure it's just like the cherry on top so that is what I'm going to be using today because it honestly um when it comes to setting sprays it might be my favorite if I'm looking for more of a longevity and one that's going to make my foundation last longer I'll use one of the other ones that I just mentioned the Urban Decay or the Make It Last um but if I'm looking just to make my foundation look flawless and make me look like basically like I have no texture or anything I will use the MAC Fix Plus so that's what I'm going to use today And when you do that, you want to make sure that you let it dry before you move. That is it. Those are my tips and tricks to make sure that your foundation is not cakey and that your concealer does not crease and your foundation basically just looks amazing and it stays on all day long. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing instructional videos and I'm going to do more definitely. Um, just leave comments down below which more instructional videos you would like to see or hear. Um, and don't forget to like this video. It really supports my channel. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts so you guys stay up to date on what I'm doing. I'm taking a little road trip. Um, it's going to be like six hours to upstate New York to go visit Cash, my boyfriend. So I might be vlogging. I'm not entirely sure yet. But stay up to date on my Instagram because I will be posting pictures and stuff like that. And then don't forget to subscribe down below so you guys don't miss any more of my videos. So I will see you guys really soon. Bye!